This week, people the world over took part in a global march for science. Tens of thousands rallying across the country and around the world to express support for scientific research. Scientists joined with families and students demanding better informed public policy. What do we want? Everything. The catchiest science protest song since Dylan wrote The Times They Are A-Changing depended on the relative speed of the observer. <laughs> With longtime collaborator E equals MC Hammer. <laughs> that the scientific method even needs defending is bonkers when discoveries in medicine, agriculture and technology inform and improve our lives every single day. Science has given us longer life expectancy, better understanding of our place in the universe, not to mention all of those thinking person's crumpets. Ooh, Duffy. <laughs> and yet millions of people passionately reject scientific consensus in favour of bullshit. Some of Australia's most affluent suburbs have the lowest rates of child immunisation. Attitudes to GM foods almost never about the science of genetic modification. Queensland One Nation Senator Malcolm Roberts mm. wants the CSIRO and the Weather Bureau to face an independent <laughs> inquiry after failing to convince him this morning of the science behind climate change. Despite their popularity, for most complementary medicines, the evidence is scant that they do us any good. It's very rare to meet an Australian family that doesn't have some form of vitamin supplements somewhere in the family. Uh, and what a lot of Australian families have is very expensive urine. Imagine the healing powers of Ricky Ponting's urine. <laughs> Despite centuries of gains, celebrities like Pete Evans are telling us not to trust the conclusions of science. Pete's picked a fight with state health authorities over the safety of fluoride in drinking water. Why are doctors experts in fluoride? Mm. And what are their qualifications to be up to date with... <laughs> Uh, the neurotoxins that, are, that uh, fluoride is. What do you need a qualification for to, to talk common sense? And why do you have to study something that is outdated, that is industry-backed, that is biased, that is not getting the results? That would be insane to study something that you're going to waste your time with. Mm. <laughs> That's just crazy. Well, not your eyes crazy. <laughs> The problem with peddling doubt just for debate is that it muddies the water on credible science. They say the autism link has been discredited, uh, except the fact on the data that autism has rapidly increased, coefficient with the increase in vaccination. Now, I don't say there's a causal link. I'm not qualified, but <laughs> my, I, I just say that I'm not prepared. Uh, I'm happy for pay, you know, no pay, no jab, no pay. I'm happy for that, but I just don't think we know. <laughs> One day, science will explain how Janine Perrett's eyeballs didn't roll back a complete 360. <laughs> as bad and as lazy as science coverage can be, what causes the most damage is leaving all the scientific conclusions up to the viewer. This is something that I always mm. encourage to do a little bit of research. I would advise parents to take that to decide on their own. I advise parents to go out and do their own research. I agree. Pauline and her supporters should do their own research. <laughs> if by research they mean carry out large-scale observational studies and get them published in peer-reviewed <laughs> academic journals. <laughs> by all means, replicate the study of all children born in Denmark between 1991 and 1998 that found no association between autism and the MMR vaccine. But if by research you mean have a bit of a Google and cherry-pick what confirms your biases, <laughs> that is the opposite of science. And while you're cherry-picking on the internet, remember that science brought you the internet. <laughs> and the cherry-picker! <laughs> saying anyone can just go online and do the same job as a scientist is like saying that a hamster can put on tiny goggles and do the same job as a pilot. <laughs> I mean, it's adorable, but it's dangerous. <laughs> Scientists shouldn't be outside marching for respect. They should be inside, curing diseases, finding alternative energy sources and inventing hoverboards. <laughs> then no-one will ever have to march again anywhere. 